in this le lecture I'm gonna cover many of the Linux basic commands so if you want to check the files or directories in your current directory so just do ls so if you want to check files along with the permissions uh, files and directories which are the permission they've got just do ls hyphen l and if you want to check files along with files inside these directories you can do ls hyphen l capital r so that's a recursively so it's got a pretty long list though so just just press ctrl c to oh, cancel Okay, if you want to uh, just okay, if you want to create a directory, just do mkda that's make directory and uh, directory names. Let's say Linux. Then, if you want to get into this directory, just what you can do cd change that's a cd stands for change directories and cd Linux. Okay, if you want to check files, okay, as I said, do ls and uh, here. If I do ls I don't have any files but if I want to create a directory inside a directory that doesn't exist what's you gonna do for instance if I do mkdir uh, for, uh, UK and then inside the directory if I want to uh, create London for instance so it's gonna uh, pop up with because this directory UK doesn't exist if it is exists then it's gonna create London inside this directory but let's say if even though if it is not uh, existing but if you want to still if you uh, if you still want to create so what you're gonna do just do mkdr iphone uh, sorry mkdr iphone p so that's gonna that's uh, iphone p stands for parent directory so it's gonna create uk and inside that it's gonna create London let's see just do ls so if you don't want to get into the directory but if you want to look in <coughs> look what content it this directory has you can simply just do ls uh, then the directory name so it's gonna print out the content of that uh, directory inside the directory okay then if you want to create multiple directories uh, at, at a time what you can do uh, you just you can do mkdir then uh, the one the two the three so you can do this sorry that's a type of kid dir so now now if i do ls so i do have three directories on, on the same level of this directory so so if you want to get into the data we can use cd as it, okay then uh, in linux uh, the top directory starts from root so from this root to uh, this is the topmost uh, directory so so if I okay if you want to check where you are so just you can do pwd that's uh, pwd stands for print working directory so we are in this directory so if I want to get into this dir one straight up I can do cddir1 this is called a real, uh, relative path because we are already in this directory uh, in linux directory so we can straight away jump into this directory but if you want to come to this directory from the root directory that is slash root slash slash linux, uh, linux and uh, dir1 so you can do slash root slash linux and dir1 this is called absolute path because this path is starting from slash so that's a root directory so that's why we call it absolute uh, absolute path so this is relative relative path because we are in the same directory uh, i mean we are in the same its parent directory the a linux so we don't need to do uh, come from a uh, root directory that's why we call it it's a relative uh, path so you we call this linux is a parent directory and uh, these are child directory because these dir1 dir2 dir3 are inside this directory that's why we call them as uh, children and this one is a parent directory okay okay if you want to rename a file or directory what are you gonna do so okay before that we can look if you want to create an empty file you can use touch and you can 
get uh, get the file name so in this case I, I create a file one txt if I do ls so that is file one txt so how you gonna know whether it's a file or directory you can do ls iphone l then you can look up here so if you if you have dash over here that's, that's a simple file so if you see d in front of it so it's a directory so in this case this is a file you can create multiple files with the touch command uh, by the way you can use up and down uh, down uh, arrows to use previous uh, commands so you can uh, you can browse by using up and down arrows okay so i can do uh, file 2.txt <coughs> I can do file 3 so you can create multiple files with a single command as many files as you want so here then do lsfnl so it's created a file 2 and file 3 so then how you gonna rename this file <coughs> if you want to rename this file you can use mv command so it helps you to move files as well as we can rename it so if I want to rename file 1.txt then use command move then you can uh, give the file name that you want to change so in this case file one.txt okay you can type uh, some letters then you can press tab if you press tab multiple times so whichever the files are starting with file so it's going to show up here so i could see in this case three files then i can press if i want to uh, rename file one then file one then just press tab so it's gonna auto fill so in because it's gonna take a lot of time it's gonna say because if you have bigger file name so then you don't need to type everything because if you type it there, there are chances of uh, having a typo so just move okay <clears throat> move command then uh, the source file then you can give the destination which are the file name you want to ch uh, change it to so I can say uh, change it to txt okay, if I do ls so that's been a uh, file one has been changed to uh, change the txt so you don't find that file uh, one that txt anymore and what if if you want to uh, change directory name so the same way you can do move then give the directory name that you want to change then you would say then give that uh, destination name so so if i do ls so that's uh, uk has changed it to england if I do ls open l England so I can have this content of uh, it's the that's uh, England's directory okay then if I want to move this file to to different directory what you're gonna do just to move and give the file name or folder name so directory name says so then where you want to move so if I want to move file 2.txt to England directory then I can do England so this file will be moved to this directory because this is not a file if you give it a file name so it's gonna replace let's check that as well okay. so now that that file has been moved to England see that uh, file is in England directory now so what if I yeah okay I, I already do have a file okay let's do okay let's change okay let's put some content in it first so we can use VA editor for to put the content inside a file. A txt. Then I'm gonna put uh, just type I for insert mode so you can see insert over here. Then types anything. For, I would say file three. Then press escape. Then you won't see insert here. Then do colon wq. That's a sh quit, say write and quit. Either you can use shift uh, capital Z Z Z Z. So so that's gonna save that file so if I if I want to check the file this files content I can do cat space that file name then if I uh, so if I want to move this file uh, if I want to rename this file move file 3.txt to uh, the file the change in the txt so this file is already exists the change in the txt so it's gonna replace the content of this file to this file so before uh, executing this command let's check the content of that uh, change in file cat change in file so okay this file doesn't have anything then let's uh, change move this uh, file 3.txt to change it.txt 
so if I do ls now so now that uh, file 3 has gone because we just change rename it to change the txt as well as we just move content of this file to this uh, change the txt let's check that if I do cat change the txt now I got that file content so this way you can replace what if what if, if it is if, I mean if it is in case of uh, directory let's do that so we have the one the two so if I want to move the one to the, the two let's check if I do ls I do have the, the two the three and okay let's do ls the three so we uh, sorry the, the two right that's uh, see the third one has moved to this directory because we just moved this directory from here to inside this directory so what if you want to uh, we, know, we already uh, saw that okay so we have seen touch uh, mkdir move and okay you got some if you want to write something to your file that file even doesn't take so you can do cat space you can you can use cat for not only to check the content of a file so even you can uh, write to it so how are you going to write cat space uh, greater than then the file name so if you do that so whatever you're going to type after entering so it's going to replace replace the content so if i check uh, replaced then do control d then do ls you got the file then just check uh, cat cat out that content dot change see that's been replaced so in some cases if you don't want to replace so how you gonna do so you can use double uh, greater than so that's gonna append the file so it's not gonna replace so it's, it says if I type edit it then control D okay let's check the content of the file again see it's been edited if you don't want to confuse with the control D what you can do is simply you can uh, just uh, write something over here uh, for instance uh, uh, third line then just enter then do control C then check the files content so now this uh, this is uh, this is what we got okay then uh, okay how you uh, uh, if you got some log files so if you want to check them so if the uh, logs files usually have uh, hundreds thousands of lines so how you gonna check them so if you carry it out so it's gonna fill all the thousand lines in a, a single page so you're gonna scroll up and scroll down with down and up arrow. so I mean uh, by by using mouse or scrolling down and up so it doesn't make sense right so if you want to see one page at a time what you can do uh, okay let's let me write something to this file first so then I can show you so I'm gonna write uh, anything doesn't matter so I'm gonna write some content to this file okay then let's see so if i do a uh, catch in your txt so it's gonna load all this stuff then i have to use mouse to scroll down and up so if you don't want to do that what you can do you can just do more space that file name so so it it loads one page at a time so then you can use space to uh, go to the next page and what if you want to show something in that file so you can do just forward slash then uh, type uh, the thing you want to look up look for and if i want in this case i want to do then enter oh pattern not found okay let's try again replace oops some reason if I do SD okay now it found SD that's why it's been gone to that that specific location now let's see slash ds okay you can you can do power slash to so this way then if you want to go back uh, then you can use uh, we use more commands so we can use less as well so this one works uh, quite opposite way up 
opposite to move then less space and the file name okay we can use these uh, we call them as pages so you can use these less and more then uh, if you want to uh, make commands easy to remember for instance uh, you got something installed for instance uh, let's say uh, let's say uh, date so if you don't want to type date so you can what you can do you can give an alias, an alias name so you can say uh, how are you going to do that just type alias space then the name you want to remember equal to that command that's it if i type d so it so if i type t it's gonna run this date command so even you can do if you if you practice well if you want to use kubectl so i don't have installed it in this command uh, in the system though so instead of typing this kubectl all the time you can straight away what you can do you can alias it k equal to kubectl so in this way you don't need to type all this uh, kubectl so you can simply type q sorry, sorry k so this is an alias so if you type uh, okay if i do d here so it comes but these are uh, not persistent for uh, that means so if you if you exit from here then if you connect to that machine again uh, i'm using remote machine though okay if i type d again it says command not found because these are not persistent so once you lose that session so you know uh, you're gonna lose those uh, alias thing so how you gonna make it persistent what you can do just uh, go to users home directory just do ls in this case uh, i'm using root user so ls open l so look for um, some hidden file so that starts with profile you could have a dot profile uh, file somewhere inside this directory okay let me check yeah over here so we need to edit that file so if i do va.profile okay then if you want to uh, go back till the end of this line just press shift g then press o to go to insert mode and and in the next to the next line so you can type uh, alias alias d equal date then uh, save and exit now if now type uh, d okay then for, first exit then uh, come to the machine again so let's see let's see now so if i type d so that's a position so even if you stop your machine even if you restart it you're not gonna lose this shortcut alias thing so because that's been saved in users profile the users profile file so it's going to be persistent what if you want to uh, an alias it so for instance i alias uh, a equal to, uh, for instance ls hyphen l let's put them in close quotes that makes easy so if i type a so it's gonna run this command ls hyphen l so are, are you gonna an alias it says straight away just uh, just type an alias Okay, then just give that uh, shortcut name. So in this case, a. That's it. If I run that a command again, it's gonna say command not found because we just an alias it. Okay. Then how are you gonna check your the commands you already uh, typed? So just type history. So it, it prints all the history, all the command that you that you run already. So okay the reason uh, we got only uh, six because we exited from the earlier session and uh, we just uh, logged into again so the earlier sessions uh, commands you you won't see if i do exit now if i connect to this mach machine again let's see then if i do uh, if i if i type history now i can see only one command because uh, those commands were running a different session so so you will have only the in history command you, you can find only the present sessions command so let's uh, 
let's run some commands uh, for instance just do pwd ls or ls open l again pwd maybe okay if i do history again so i can see six commands six commands so if i want to run this a uh, specific command three ls are you going to choose you can press you can exclamation and that command number so it automatic automatically going to pick the command that associated with the number three so it's going to run see if i look history now i could see this ls command let's see see the seven number seven command ls so that we can uh, give exclamation and number to run the commands from the history so if you want to print out something on standard sc screen how you what you're going to do just echo and uh, type whatever you're going to print out so in this case hello linux okay it's a good uh, just try to make a good habit of using these quotes double quotes if you write uh, type something then even if you are uh, you can have spaces so you can uh, assume it's a string so that makes easy to in the in the, uh in future it's gonna make it easy for you so hello linux and is printed that the cards are went to the next line so if you want to print here as well as if you don't want to uh, move to the next line so you can use iphone n so the cursor just look here in this case the cursor moved to next line but here it didn't because we avoided that new line so this what we call we can call echo as a command and this is an argument and these are options these options modify commands behavior in this case we try to print in the same line so this n adjusted it so and if you want to look for which cell you have at the you're using so just do echo dollar and shell then it says that you are using bin bash then why, why we put a dollar over here so this is an environment variable so we are trying to print the content of this environment variable that's why we use dollar even we can create our own own environment variable how are you gonna do just type export then uh, give a name to your environment variable so and make a habit of using caps capital uh, names for uh, environment variables of course you can use a lower it does lower case uh, letters as well it doesn't matter but in the standard way we can use a uh, capital letter so in this case i'm sorry you don't need to put dollar here so export space then give it a name uh, in this case i can call it name then you can assign any value to it so i could say maduka so if i want to check a value of this variable how are you gonna do just type echo dollar and that variable name so variable names are case sensitive if i do small a here i'm not gonna see anything because that variable doesn't exist so a true name so i'm gonna see that value of that variable okay even uh, you don't need to uh, use export as well as straight away you can use uh, let's see if i use small small letters then name name equal if i do rishi let's see if i do echo dollar name so just make sure to use the right variable name as i said these variables are uh, names are case sensitive so now i could see that rishi so you don't need to use export as you can use data then what's the use case of it uh, for instance uh, if you are using aws so if you don't want to uh, save your credentials so you can supply them as variables this way because these variables are persistent still this session so once you let's try exit and let's connect to it so if i do echo echo dollar name again so see you're not gonna see because those variables are not persistent so those were those were session uh, the those uh, variables are gonna uh, you know uh, unset once you exit from your current session of course you can make it person by storing them in a dot profile okay how are you gonna check that your environment variables you can just type env so this one is gonna print all the environment variables available on your system so just type env to uh, check environment variables so how are you gonna take help for a commands just do uh, 
man space your command name in this case i want to check man page for date so manual man start from manual then man space date then it's gonna give all the possible uh, possible uh, combinations for to use this command and sometimes you don't even sometimes we don't remember the command so uh, for instance i don't know how to create directory how are you gonna see in that case you can use apropos space and just type two three letters of that the command you remember or just if i want to create a directory so i can do it uh, i propose that so let's see so i can i got all the commands uh does that contains dir so if you if i want to specifically you can see directory so that command starts with the dir i mean that commands contains this direct dir e so that's gonna pop up here let's see now you can see you can see this uh, this uh this one contains dir directories so we can so you can go through this page and you can read then you will understand which command to use so we we were thinking to create a directory but we don't know the command so so here you could see mkdir so this one helps you okay you can use which command as well uh, which which mkdir let's see okay sorry this one shows the location of this uh, command where it uh, where it uh, has okay if you want to check users home data you can do echo dollar again this is home is a variable then you're gonna print that even you can do echo the tilde tilde refers to home directory so for instance uh, if i am here so let's jump into that linux folder so if i do pwd i'm not in home directory or users home directory so if i want to move to home directory you can do you can type just cd that takes to users home directory either you can do let's jump back to cd linux then either you can do cd tilde we call this symbol as tilde tilde symbol then enter now you're gonna be in users home directory okay so uh, this one whenever you see dollar over uh, this pound symbol here uh, that that means you are a, a super user root user so this user has all the permission so i'll i'll show you how uh, if it is dollar that means that's a your regular user not a super user but when you find a, a pound symbol here so that means you are a root user that that user has all the privileges okay then if you look here this one is a username and at the right this one is a host name you can change your host name as well how are you gonna do <coughs> just type host name then give it your name like uh, i would say linux practice in this case okay uh, maybe uh, this one doesn't have a space let's see okay now let's do bash now you could see that linux has a host name and this one is a root this tilde refers to that as i said this is a home you are in users home directory okay how are you gonna add users so you can you can use uh, two commands you can uh, either you can use a uh, user add then give it a username that's it now are you gonna check whether this user has been created you can look into this file cat slash etc pass wd so this file contains all the users info so we are looking for madhu so this user has been created we used user add command so if you want to take help of this command you should just type user add iphone iphone, iPhone help so that gives all the possible uh, option then either you can do user add iphone h so many of the commands supports this iphone h so that's a quick one though you can use uh, add user as well but add user uh, looks for inter uh, interactive things so in this case if i want to create user rishi add if i use add user command so so i have to enter uh, password so it's going to be interactive right so because we can uh, type over here so in case of uh, user add it didn't uh, it didn't 
we don't need to interact so the use case is while running some scripts in that script you want to create a user so you can use user add but if you want to manual and you can if you want to type interactively you can use add user command okay so uh, imagine you got some uh, as a, uh, some ha <coughs> some hundreds of lines in your uh, uh, logs file so how are you gonna are you gonna check uh, just top 10 lines files from the top or just last 10 lines are we gonna do we can do let's uh, let me look for a log file so we usually have the log files under slash where slash logs directory so you can have all the log files over here so let me read this file uh, cat alternatives okay no, that file doesn't have anything let's do something and check for some files so so with with some content if i do dot log okay this file okay this file has uh, some contents so if i want to print only top 10 lines so if i ever want to look all this stuff so what you can do you can say head then if an n then 10 then give that uh, file name so i got only top 10 lines i think we uh, we can ignore this n as well yeah you can do no okay we need to supply that n so if you want to uh, check last 10 lines of that uh, file so you can say the tail tail iphone m 10 lines and give that file name so you can uh, change this number to uh, as many lines as you want so if I'm, if you want only last three lines so you can do just type three so this works with uh, that head uh, head for his head as well so basically if you install something in your system for instance if i do ls iphan ls slash etc so if you want to install something so this is the uh, ubuntu system so you can use apt this is a package manager then uh, for centers you can use them so apt install then give it a package name so in this case nginx so once i hit enter so it's it's gonna ask me to enter y so then only it's gonna continue so if you don't want to don't want you if you don't want to be asked so then you can straight away give here iphone y so that means you already entered y so it's gonna install the package so once you install this package nginx so you want to configure something so whatever you're going to install in your uh, in, in linux system you're going to find all the configuration files under slash etc directory so here we could have nginx let's let me try type okay that file is exists that's why i can change it to the directory so so you can have all the uh, configuration files related to this nginx package so you can find it over here so so just remember all the, the uh, configuration files we can see under slash etc directory as we did last so if you look for the log so you can do you can change to cd slash var slash oh slash var slash log directory so you can have all the uh, all the logs over here so we just installed nginx so that nginx directory has been created under the var lag so you can see all the logs related to the nginx over here okay let's see so i don't have any logs here uh, let's do then if i we just install that service system ctl start njnx okay yeah if you if you are trying to run something but if you see some error how you're going to check you can even you could even you, you can look for the in so so if you want to check uh, logs of this service what you can do journal ctl iphone u then give the service name nginx in this case so if you look into the lag so it says fail to start high this web server as a reverse proxy so yeah even you can if you go through this thing so you can find it so it says my address already in use so 
this port 00080 is already in use so what you're gonna do if you want to check the listening port so you can type command net start iphone tunnel p so just remember as a tunnel p so that then it's gonna give all the output then you can if you want to source something uh, specific you can do grep command so from this output we are looking for the possible combination of it wherever it is it it's gonna print that line so this finds only one it in all of these uh, from all of these outputs so so it just uh, filter that line so okay uh, this is a PID that's a processor ID so so if you want to stop this process what you can do just type kill space and give that uh, PID number so in this case one double two eight so that port 80 this port 80 is uh, free now so what I can do I can use up arrow to start the service nginx okay now uh, let's visit the, that public IP oh I can't remember let's see so let's go back to your browser then yeah now I can see so if I uh, go back to our uh, that command and over here so if I do ls so what I was trying to do, I was trying to get some logs in this file. So, so if I do cat access logs, now I can see some logs in this nginx uh, slash var slash log slash nginx access file. So even I can see that uh, over here somebody visited. So I can see their IP as well, 49.43. So let's look whether that's mine or not. So what you can do. Uh, what is my IP? Yeah, here 49, 43, 218, 143. So that's my uh, that's my public IP. That's what we can see here. So this way you can check logs. Okay, let me. You can uh, if you want to clear the terminal, you can type clear. So if you are here, so if you want to go back. I mean if you want to clear this stuff you can shortcut is control L press control L to clear your terminal so if I type uh, for instance ls so that was that's a valid command so if I if I want to check whether that last command uh, was run so what you can do echo space dollar and question mark so in some situations that, that you want to check uh, something has run successfully so so if you see zero that means that last command was successful if you see something else that wasn't successful let me type this invalid command so if i do if i echo dollar question mark so it's gonna print some some number so that's a not zero means it's not successful but uh, this number has some meaning so you can google it that uh, then you will find out different numbers for different so if i do uh, ls hyphen something okay uh, let me type okay in this case this command uh, was right but this uh, what we call this option wasn't right so if I do uh, echo dollar question mark so here uh, I didn't get 127 I got different number because the part uh, that commands command was right but that uh, options were not right that's why so that's why you just google it with the, so you will find it out Okay, this uh, slash var contain slash var slash log contains all the uh, log files in this directory. So, if you want to store something in temp directory, so what you can do, if you want to some store something temporarily, you can put them in this temporary directory. Once you uh, reboot your system, so you're gonna lose all this uh, content of inside this directory. So that's why we call it temp directory. So you're gonna put something over here you're gonna lose that uh, files once you reboot okay uh, you installed some some uh, package docker.io for instance 
okay it's been installed so you created a user mark okay you can check for the users either you can use cat pass wd or you can use get ent pass wd so it, it prints same output so let's create a password for this user so how are you gonna do if you want to create password for any user just do pass wd then username so so you have to be a root user before but otherwise you know uh, you won't change let's see i'm gonna create a user for pass wd rishi then i'm gonna type the password okay if you want to switch to that user then what you're gonna do yes you and that username so in this case it's not gonna ask for password because you're already a root user okay yeah if i want to change a uh, password for uh, other user i already switched it to uh, user rishi so you you could you could see over here dollar that's a normal user regular user so the uh, pound mean the salute user as i said so if i uh, let's see uh, users do i have any other user okay if i want to create for this uh, create password for madhu's user what are you going to do if i if i do pass wd madhu it's not gonna work because it says you may not be we have modified password information for mother because you are not that user and you are not even a root user that's why if you want to change password for that user so just be a that user otherwise or you can be a root user to change the password so okay that's fine so if i if i run docker images yeah because it says permission denied because this user root uh, rishi is a not part of this docker group so who have a part of this docker group they can access it so let's check if you type groups then you can see the current users uh, groups is this rishi user is a part of only this rishi's group so if you check id of that user you can just type id so that user has one or two uh, okay if you look into this cad etc pass wd file if you look here the root user always contains id as a zero just remember okay and wherever you create a user as a normal uh, regular user so you, that user numbers uh, id and ids are going to be thousand plus so below that so we're gonna have this uh, system users accounts are some something related to system okay so uh, i'm i was trying to uh, access this command docker image but i'm not part of this docker's group so how are you gonna modify this so you, you have to be a root user first then if i exit so i was already root user then what you're gonna type just run command user mod that's a user modification iphone a that means append to what you're gonna append g capital d that means group so you're gonna append this group and which group docker group then in the in this group i'm gonna add you as user rishi okay now switch back to the rishi again just su and user name because you're a you root user so it's not gonna ask for password then if i uh, use up care apparel to check the command so if i do docker images now i didn't get any error because i was part of that group so so we can use user mode command to uh, modify user so in this case i i've added a user rishi to this docker group then if you want to send some files to your uh, remote system or if you want to download files from remote system are you gonna do so what you can do let me minimize it okay Okay, let me copy this uh, machine's public IP. Okay, let me put it somewhere. So, uh, if it okay, let me move to desktop. Let's check for files. So, if I want to uh, this file, if I want to send this file to this remote server. How am I gonna do? So let's move to users home directory. 
Let me switch to uh, that's fine. If I do a PWD, I'm here. If I do LS, I don't have the test file. So, if I want to send this file from my local machine to over here, this is a Windows, uh, sorry, Linux machine, uh, Mac OS. So, this comes with uh, SAP, even Windows as well. Windows uh, 10, win above, above Windows, it comes with SSL. So, what you can do the command SCP, then space. The file you want to send in this case i want to send the test dot dot ovpn file then give that username of remote system so in this case i'm gonna use a root at the right and that give that public ip okay public ip or host name then you can do colon slash colon and where you want to send so in this case i want to send it to slash root so slash root that's it so if i enter it's gonna ask for password so i'm gonna put password so that's been sent so if i do ls over here now i can see that file test.ovpn what if you want to do the other way for instance uh, i've got this uh, linux folder if i want to get this directory into my local machine how are we gonna do we have to use the opposite way are you going to do scp space give that uh, okay give that username and the public ip then you have to specify the path and fold folder or file name the next so then where you want to uh, copy that files from remote server to local so i want to copy here then i'm going to put dot of course it's going to pop up right now because i'm trying to read uh, get a directory now let's see Let, let's put the password okay it says that it's not a regular file because it's a directory in that case what you're gonna do just put iphone r over here that means recursively if i put the password now i got this directory over here into my local system so this way we can use SCP. Uh, I forgot to uh, mention the remove RM command. So remove. This is a very dangerous command. So use it with precaution because once you lose your data, you can't retrieve it. So just careful while using this command. So if I want to, if I do, let's let me jump to that uh, Linux folder, CD Linux. Then if I do LS. If I want to remove this file, what I can do, I can just type change, uh, sorry, rm space that file name. So it's gonna remove. If I do ls, it's been removed. But if in case of directory, let's see what happens. So directory, you can't uh, remove straight away. So what you can do, you can do rm space iphone r. I, r means recursively, whatever you're gonna have in, inside this folder, you can you're going to delete this folder including that content so you can use rm iphone r and the directory name so if you do so the directory 2 is gone sometimes if you if it pops up from if it has multiple files so you have to press y y y for uh, you know for all files so you can in that case you can do rm rm space iphone rf so recursively and forcefully you can delete everything from that folder okay and if you want to look uh, a service state uh, a service status how you're going to do you can type system ctl space status and the service name in this case uh, i install nginx that's an engine we call it nginx nginx or so just type enter so it is up and running so if you want to stop that service, you can do system ct system ctl stop nginx. If you want to start it, you can do start. If you want to enable it, enabling nothing but if this system reboots, so at the time of uh, in simple words startup uh, in Linux, uh, in Windows we have startup right. So here 
if some if you stop the system and if you start it so it's not going to restart automatically so you need to enable it so once you the, for that you can do system ctl space enable and the service name so this is gonna create a sim link in this uh, slash lib system d system d this over here so whenever you see restart your service it's a, it's it's it are, i mean uh, this one is going to start automatically so what are the commands i can cover i hope this helped it's gonna this is a long lecture though thank you for watching